Good evening. Welcome to Breaking Bread at 6. It is a traditional liturgy, but done in a more contemporary style. We're so grateful to have Richard Wineland, both as our musician and our preacher today. And I'm grateful to be here as the worship leader. If you are new to Breaking Bread at 6, you can not only watch it online, but now you can also attend in person. You just need to go to the Christ Church Cathedral website sometime after Monday about noon and sign up before Friday about noon to be one of the persons live in person at Breaking Bread at 6 downtown at the cathedral. We are celebrating tonight a celebration of Holy Eucharist, right to, if you're following along in a book of common prayer, you'll find it on page 355. And last, the offering that you submit this night during the offertory, you'll see there's a barcode, you can click on the barcode, or you can text GIVE to Christ Church's telephone number. The offertory the offering that you give this night will go towards the ministries of Breaking Bread at Six and the work of the cathedral. It is good to gather. It is good to be together virtually and at a distance as we come together on the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost on this November 8th. So let us go into the house of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against a wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melodies of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But alas for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descended. Our full homage to demand. King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood. Lord of lords in human death, in the body and the The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. 
But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridemaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am struggling a little bit to be sympathetic with uh, the characters in Jesus' parable today. The, the bridegroom uh, sends out invitations, but then uh, shows up hours late, and then shuts the door on half of the bridesmaids. The bridesmaids who get shut out are off trying to buy oil somewhere in the middle of the night when the wedding is about to begin. Meanwhile, the bridesmaids who did bring extra oil won't share it and come across looking, looking just a bit on the selfish side. And what do we do with a parable from Jesus' lips that speaks about God closing the door to heaven? One thing seems clear. The wedding banquet represents the joy of being in the presence of God. It was around a month ago that we heard another parable about a wedding feast in which the king sends out invitations to his own son's wedding feast only to have those invitations refused. Not to be put out or deterred, the king invites into the wedding celebration whoever is standing on the street corners and has a huge party anyway. In today's parable, everyone is invited to the banquet so why does anyone get shut out? There's a story that in the 5th century before Christ, when Prince Siddhartha Gautama, also known as the Buddha, started to wander around India shortly after his enlightenment, he encountered several men who recognized him as a person who was set apart, a, a kind of an extraordinary sort of person or being, and they asked uh, Siddhartha, are you a god? To which he replied, no. Are you a reincarnation of a god? To which he replied again, no. Are you a wizard then? No. Well, are you a man? No again. So the questioners were perplexed and they, they said, so what are you? Finally, they asked, and Siddhartha, the Buddha, said, I am awake. Buddha is not a proper name. It's, it's a Sanskrit word, which means the awakened one. It's basically everything that he taught. He spoke of being awake and awakened constantly. Now, parables are tricky. And I think we tend to overinterpret them sometimes, thinking of them as almost like doctrinal statements. And if we do that, we might find ourselves in a theological crisis. We might ask ourselves, is this story about heaven? Is it about the kingdom of God here on earth? What was Jesus talking about, and why would Jesus close the door on anyone? We, we might be tempted to ask that last question, why would Jesus close the door on anyone? But we already know what the answer is. Jesus closed the door on no one. Not prostitute, not tax collector, not Roman soldier, not notorious sinner. Jesus' door is always open. And the disciples who were there that day and heard this parable uh, and would have witnessed it knew that and witness that in his ministry. Now, in that time, weddings were a great moments in the life of a village, and, and 
actually they still are today in that part of the world, if the bridegroom came from another village, which seems to be the case here, there is really no way to know exactly when the bridegroom is going to arrive. And so um, nobody knew, so the maidens kept the bride company as she waited for her bridegroom. Of course, there were no street lights, and when it got dark, you needed lamps to be able to see. So Jesus used that setting, which would have been very familiar to his hearers, to challenge his followers to be prepared, to be awake, to be ready. The foolish bridesmaids were unprepared. They ran out of oil. So when their moment came, they lost the opportunity to help light the way for the bridegroom. I've often heard this scripture used as a, as, as a kind of a word to Jesus' followers to be ready for his return on earth, a return to, to earth. It, it might partly be that. That makes some sense. And, and while we anticipate Jesus coming in glory, as the creed says, we are also told that he is with us always to the end of the age. No waiting required. No doors to be open or to shut. He is here. Always here. What if Jesus' purpose in telling this story is meant to simply shock us with the details, such as closing the door on the foolish and unprepared ones, only to get to the real heart of the message, the white-hot core, which is, wake up. And just as important, keep awake. Jesus wants to rouse us from our slumber. As I look back on my life, it is amazing how much of it I have simply slept through. Not literal sleep, mind you, although I understand that we spend about a third of our lives actually sleeping which is a wonderful thing, but I'm not talking about physical sleep, I'm talking about just plodding along with little awareness of what I'm doing, what I need to be doing, what is most important, what I need to be getting ready for, so often missing the point entirely, not being grateful for or even noticing those small graces and little miracles that come my way. Reacting to life instead of being awake and sensitive and prepared to embrace the beauty and the surprise and the adventure that life offers, especially the life of faith. Just being kind of groggy and stumbling through the days. I am a person in recovery. I have been in recovery from addiction for over a decade now, and some of my work here at the cathedral is in, is in the recovery ministry. And I have found a companion, a spiritual guide, in a Franciscan monk and Catholic priest named Father Richard Rohr. And Father Rohr has himself been in recovery for decades and has some wise words for us about being prepared, about being awake, and about being enlightened. Now those of you who are in recovery or who have loved ones in recovery uh, are probably familiar with at least some of the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. The 12th step uses this language. It speaks of having a spiritual awakening as a result of working the other 12 steps. Father Rohr reminds us that spiritual awakenings are very rarely sudden events or upheavals. Those do happen. Father Rohr reminds us that awakenings usually develop slowly over a period of time. It's like when you wake up in the morning. Not too many people I know spring out of bed ready to go. We have to kind of work ourselves into it, right? Persons who are addicted, frankly, spend much of their life sleepwalking, getting caught up in a web of dependence and addiction, just wanting to be numb just wanting to be checked out. The genius of the 12 steps is that it challenges us, as Jesus himself did, 
first of all, to wake up and then to stay awake. Father Roar is right. Enlightenment, awakenings, maybe even conversion, if you will, are rarely spectacular, rarely dramatic. Not sudden explosions of insight or big bang experiences. An awakening occurs gradually over time. I, I like to think of it as the light that is breaking in at dawn. You see just a little pinprick, a little pinpoint of light uh, above the ridges, and then you see a hint of purple and a band of dark blue, and it, it, it gradually moves in and gets brighter and brighter. Think of those bridesmaids with their oil lamps pushing back the darkness, little by little as they kept vigil with their lamps. Or even the lowest watt light, night light in a dark room. I mean, if you've got a dark room and you put a three watt night light in there, it makes all the difference in the world. Make a small change. Awaken gradually. Wipe the sleep from your eyes. Shake yourself from slumber. Consider the dawn. Remember the night light. Just a little bit of light can make all the difference. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, and John, the Bishop of Tennessee, and for all the clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the missions of this congregation in Bolivia, Iraq, and Haiti, especially St. Andre's Church, Hinche, Haiti, and the Reverend Noe Bernier. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of the West Indies, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, Primate and Bishop of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. The Diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember St. Agnes's Cohen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for all those serving our country at home and abroad 
and all those who suffer because of civil strife, that war may end and peace be established. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation for all teachers, students, and administrators in all places of learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, friend. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Paz. La paz. La paz. Again, we're so pleased that you're, you've joined us here at Breaking Bread at 6 tonight at uh, Christ Church Cathedral. And we are uh, meeting in person as well at 6 o'clock, our usual time. We'd love to have you come and join us. We also have a Zoom coffee hour on the first Sunday of every month. The next one will be in December, the first Sunday, at 5 o'clock until 5.45 or 50, and then we'll gather here in person. So if you'd like to be part of that, uh, send us an email. We'll send you a link. We'd love to have you join us. Actually, I think the link is on our website, so you can check, check it out from there. Um, we also have a Facebook page. Uh, uh, focused on Breaking Bread at Six activities. If you are new to the community, we'd love to have you join that as well. If you have any more, inf if you have any more questions or need some information, just contact me, uh, Richard Wineland at Christ Church Cathedral. Many thanks also to our readers and uh, to our technical director, Roger Rhodes, to uh, uh, Reverend Lissa for celebrating tonight, and um, to everybody who behind the scenes made this service of worship possible. Thanks. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise to you, O God, for you have been our haven from generation to generation. From age to age, you are God. You created the mountains, the seas, the dry land, and all that is in them. Through your servant Moses, you led your people to freedom. In your Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah came. One even greater than Moses has come to us. On him rests the spirit of wisdom and truth, and on his life hang all the law and the prophets. Though he was killed by the enemies of love, you raised him to life and seated him at your right hand. In him we have seen the splendor of your radiance, and through him you have entrusted us with the proclamation of freedom and healing for the whole world. And so we join the saints and angels in proclaiming your glory, and we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of your Son, by whom we are saved, in whom we are immersed in grace, and through whom we are called to the life of servanthood and sacrifice. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his arms on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within your saving embrace. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Recalling now his suffering and death, and celebrating his resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Accept, O Lord, our sacrifice of praise, this memorial of our redemption, and send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. Let them be for us the body and blood of your Son, and grant that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may be filled with your life and goodness. Nourished by the sacrament of his body and blood, we work to live now as we will live then. Renewed by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, teach us to live in the sure and certain hope that the last will be first and the first last. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.